Sorry. Hey, Sandy. Oh, sorry. Um, we're, we're days away from your professional debut. Um, kind of describe the feelings or emotions that you've been feeling. Has it been, uh, you know, butterflies? Has it been calm before the storm, a mixture of both? Um, excitement. Like, I'm, I'm like really excited. Uh, people have asked me, am I nervous? And I'm, I'm not feeling any nerves yet, but I'm just so excited to get going. Obviously, this moment's been building up for some time. You have a rich amateur experience. This was always in the fold for you. Um, kind of visualizing it. I know that you've, you've in, in social media posts, you've talked about visualizing everything. Um, what are kind of your expectations for this fight for yourself? Um, just to go out there and put on a performance. Um, obviously, everyone knows about my amateur background, but we're in the pros now. So... Um, I'm just wanting to adjust straight away and uh, yeah, just put on a good performance and, and then show everyone what I'm capable of. Training versus for the amateurs versus for a professional bout, what have been the subtle changes that you've had to make in training for, for a professional bout? Um, not, much, not much difference, but obviously I'm more like one-to-one -one with my trainer, Kristen now. And uh, I've just been in the gym with him every day. I hope, uh, maybe longer sessions, more rounds. So um, that's the only difference, really. Sounds good. Sandy, congratulations and, and best of luck on your debut. Thank you. Thanks, Jeremy. If you go to Jonathan Nagger from Crow Box and Fans, please. Hi, Sandy. How are you doing? Hi. Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Good stuff. Um, Given sort of your amateur pedigree, um, you know, Commonwealth Gold, um, World Championships, um, how quickly do you anticipate that you're going to be moving in the professional ranks? Have you had those conversations with management? Um, yeah, we've had them conversations. Um, but I just want to do it the right way, really. I know I've got a lot of pedigree and experience coming into the pro game, but uh, I want to do it right and I want to because I want to reach the top, so I want to make sure I do it right. And uh, how fast my management team think I can do it and my trainer, promoter, then um, I'll leave it to them. But I'll just, I'll just deal with uh, the fighting along the way. Currently, obviously, we have a number of, um, you know, world champion uh, females at the moment and girls coming up through the ranks. Is there anyone sort of you particularly like watching, you know, because of how they fight and how they conduct themselves outside of the ring? Um, yeah, there's, there's a few, isn't there? Um, like the top ones. Uh, I like to see boxing. I don't like to see scrapping. and um, Yeah, I like to see good clinical, technical boxing. And uh, yeah, the, the top ones there, I'm not going to really put out any names, but the top fighters, they're the ones I like to watch. And just lastly, what, what can we expect uh, from your style on, on Saturday night? Um, I can do, I can, I can adjust, um, but I'm going to stick to my boxing. Um, I'm just going to show you a good boxing performance on Saturday night. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jonathan. We'll go to Ron Lewis next, please. Hi, Sandy. Um, hey. Hiya. Um, obviously, um, you know, you were expecting to be in Japan right now. Um, have, have, is it difficult to sort of tear yourself away from that, even though you got a big fight this week? Because, you know, when you got Karis going for a medal tomorrow morning and that sort of thing, are you you up early in the morning cheering him on and watching them, or do you try and block it out your mind? Yeah, I'm I'm watching them every day. Um, I was just on the phone to Karis and Lauren today, actually. Um, I, I've travelled the world with him for many years, so um, I'm there with him at heart. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Does that are you trying to actually fit your trading around? Because uh, obviously, you know, it's a struggle to get to, to some of these. They got a nice session in the early morning, but there's one overnight. How, how are you going to cope? How do you cope with that in fight week? Yeah, I've been watching the ones that I can, um, and I've just been watching the ones back that I haven't because obviously, coming close to my fight, rest is important for me. So, and they understand that anyway. Was it? Um, you know, was it a wrench getting yourself away from Sheffield or, or was it a feeling, because obviously you had a year waiting for 
what was going to happen, whether you were going to get the shot of the world after after Rosie didn't make it through through the Europeans before you actually finally yeah. knew. What, did, had you sort of built yourself up to the idea of what happened um, and what you were going to do over that year? So obviously when I knew that there wasn't going to be a second qualifier, um, I had to get my head around it. And of course I was heartbroken, upset. But I just switched my focus on the pros and I believe like, if you if you if you want to if you want to reach the top and if you're a top athlete you could there's going to be setbacks along the way and you've got to be able to manage them and that was one of my setbacks and I've overcome it and here we are. Um, do you, um, firstly, do you think Karis will win tomorrow? I mean, as I say, she's got a medal on the line tomorrow now. Yeah, I'm not being biased, but you're 100. percent I see you know she's up against um, and Karis is capable of. Yes, Karis is capable of going all the way, and I said it from day one before she was um, started going to the in, the major international tournaments. I was like, she's going to be at the Olympics. She'll tell you that herself as well. A few years, years ago, I said she'll go, she will be at the Olympics. And um, one thing this has also showed, this always shows, you know, he showed is is the level that top class amateurs is often much better than top class pros at the moment in the women's sport. You saw Maver Hamadouche, a world champion today, not make it past the first round. Um, does this give you confidence that you're going to be, you know, up the top quite quick? Yeah, listen, we've been saying this for a long time. Um, but if you watch the, the, if you watch elite amateurs, they're, they're much better than half of the pros. I'm not just saying that just because I've only just turned over and I was on a GB for nine years. I'm I'm saying it because no, it's facts. If you watch if you watch the top elite amateurs, you can see yourself the boxing ability, the ring IQ, everything. Um, there's so much talent, and after these Olympics, you'll see a lot turn over. Uh, and obviously, you, you you gain from that from being able to be of. So many female pros haven't been able to be full time athletes. You've been a full time athlete for a long time, and and that's that's you know all your grounding, isn't it? Yeah, I've been a full time athlete for nine. Well, yeah, nearly nine nine years. So this is my life. Boxing is my life. I don't know nothing else. So I'm going to be very hard to beat, and I ain't going to be beaten in the pro game. I've done it all my life and uh, I put everything into it and this is my life. Boxing is my life. No Excellent. boxing, no life. <laughs> it's the cheers, Sandy. Good luck, Sandy, mate. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Ron. If we go to Danny Flexen from Seconds Out, please. Hey, Sandy, how you doing? Hey, you all right? Yeah, yeah, good, thanks. Um, good, thanks. You talked to Ron just then about watching your friends compete in Tokyo. Although you're obviously well behind them and you want them to get the job done, is it a little bit bittersweet for you? Do you ever watch it and think, you know, that could have been me, particularly in your weight class? It's not bittersweet. Um, there's a little bit of upset, but it is what it is, isn't it? And uh, I've overcome it. I'm just, I'm, I'm happy seeing my teammates out there performing and going for medals. Um, that's the person who I am. I want to see people winning. And especially... The people that I've travelled the world with for years, I live with up in Sheffield. Um, it's an exciting week, isn't it? I got my pro debut, and I'm and I'm watching my uh, ex teammates uh, in the Olympic Games. Great stuff. Now, focusing more on you, I spoke to Clifton yesterday, as you know, and he said, well, he said a number of good things, praising you, obviously, but he, he said that you can be as good as, if not better than, Katie Taylor as a pro which is a, a pretty big shout. What, what do you make of it when you hear him say something like that about you? Um, you know that Clifton ain't just talking shit, basically. He, he, he speaks his mind, and he... Um, for, so for him to say that, that's, that's nice. And um, I know he's got a lot of belief in me. And um, I said it. I said it from day one that I want to be up there and I want to be... When people say women's boxing... And they say, Katie Taylor, I want my name to be mentioned also. So I'm just going to do everything I can and and uh, hopefully get get there, get, get to the top. 
Good stuff. And what are you expecting from the first fight at the weekend? I mean, you know, generally when someone makes their debut, it's against a journeyman or journeywoman in this case. But what, what are you expecting and what are you looking to show? Um, I'm, yeah, I'm expecting Kirsty to come, come, come and win, like she's been saying. And, and that's what I wanted. And uh, you, I'm gonna, you're going to expect a good boxing performance from myself. I want to show, want to show you all a good boxing performance, and uh, that's what I'm planning to do. Great stuff. Best of luck on Saturday. Thank you. Thanks, Danny. And just lastly, Ames from Boxing News TV. Pleasure to meet you, Sandy. How's life? Hey. Yeah. All good. Thank you very much. Good. Good to hear. All good. Sandy, I just want to know, um, as you enter into the pro ranks, what are your motivations? What What exactly is it that you fight for? Um, I fight, I fight for myself and my family, and to to get a, to have a better life. Um, from growing up with not having enough, not a lot. I want to. My motivation is to win more titles and live comfortable, and yeah, for my future kids. And um, with the, with the head of your. Pro, uh, pro debut this weekend you've been sparring the likes of Savannah Marshall how has those spars kind of brought you on yeah very good because like she's a seasoned pro isn't she so for me to bank the rounds in um with her at this stage is uh, very good for me and have you had any advice from family members and things as you approach this weekend um yeah, mainly my, my older brother, because obviously he's been there and done it. And uh, he, um, yeah, so he's going to he's gonna be there along the way. Um, so, yeah, we're all good. We're all good to go. What did he say to you? He just said, he's just saying he'll be with me all along, along the way. And basically just take it, just take it in my stride and... Um, I've been in and done, and I've been I've been in big occasions before in the past, and obviously this is a pro game now, so just just adjusting really. And you mentioned you, know, you want to put yourself in the conversation with the likes of Katie Taylor, um, because of the way that the um, game is right now, there isn't a lot of depth of talent within uh, the game. Does that involve you then kind of flittering between the weights to get the experience to then eventually get world titles at different weights as well? Yeah, so um, it will be between super light and water uh, for myself. So I can do either weights and um, yeah, I'll, I'll be looking to fight anybody really.